Hello and welcome to the Aero-V engine assembly video series. I'm Joe Norris at Sonics Aircraft LLC. In this series of video segments, we are going to walk through the assembly of an Aero-V engine. We will be following the sequence called out in the Aero-V assembly manual. The manuals get updated much more often than the video series. So if there is a case where the manual and the video series disagree, your manual that came with your engine is the guide for you to follow. But in general, all of the steps that we have in the manual will be shown in the video series. We hope you enjoy the video series. We hope you enjoy putting together your Aero-V engine. And we look forward to seeing your airplane flying. In this segment, we're going to install our oil pump. There's three different styles of oil pumps that you may use on your Aero-V engine, depending on which uh, model you're building. This pump that I have on the table here is what we call our maxi pump, and that is the pump you would use if you're running a remote oil cooler, a bottom-mounted oil cooler or some other remote mount. If you're running the top mount oil cooler that mounts on the top of the engine, then you're going to run a pump that's very similar to this, but is actually ported differently internally and it'll have a flat cover on it rather than a cover that shows the uh, ports for the uh, oil cooler lines. If you're building a turbo engine, there's yet a different style pump you'll use, which is actually a duplex pump. It has uh, the main pump for uh, oil pressure to the engine, then it has a secondary pump piggybacked on that that is used to scavenge the oil back from the turbocharger. Regardless of which pump you use though, the installation at this point is going to be exactly the same. So we'll use this pump to demonstrate the installation. The pump is driven off of the camshaft. As I turn the pump over you'll see this uh, tab on the back of the drive shaft here. Now this tab interfaces with the camshaft and the camshaft in the engine is actually what drives the uh, oil pump. So the, f the first thing we're going to do is uh, when we install the pump is to lubricate that tab. Before we do that though, we want to check to make sure our uh, gear clearance is proper on our pump. Now a new pump should be just fine. Uh, we've not run into any that are out of spec, a brand new. But if you're rebuilding an engine and it's a used pump, you will want to check this to make sure. So I'll show you how to do that. You just take your pump uh, with the gears installed like this and take the cover and just hold it over top of the gear so that you can see the, where the gear uh, interfaces with the cover there. And then you're going to use a standard uh, automotive style feeler gauge. And I've got the, the five thinnest gauges that are included in this set. Uh, the thinnest being a uh, one and a half thousandths thick uh, blade here. What we want to do is check that the uh, clearance between the gear and the cover is not more than four thousandths of an inch. That's your maximum clearance you can have is four thousandths of an inch. But I'm going to take my one and a half thousandths feeler gauge here and I can't even begin to push it under there. So we know that the clearance in this particular pump is less than one and a half thousandths. And that's very good. Uh, at this point, zero clearance is fine because when you install the pump, uh, you'll put a gasket in between here, which will give you just that much clearance of the gasket thickness. And the tighter this clearance is, the better oil pressure your pump will produce. So we know our clearance is good. We can set the cover aside and we're ready to install our pump. I want to take the gears out of the pump uh, initially here and that'll help us to install the body into the engine. Just pull them out. Here's your pump body. I've already uh, installed a gasket on the back and pre-treated that with some gasket uh, sealer. Uh, whatever your favorite sealer is here is fine. Uh, some people will use uh, a silicone sealer. I've used what they call a fuel lube, which is a oil and fuel proof uh, sealer that you can buy from uh, sources such as aircraft spruce and other aviation outlets. Uh, whatever sealer you use, make sure you put some on there. The pump goes in with the uh, boss for the drive lug up because the camshaft is in the upper part of the opening. And you just simply slide it right into the body get it fairly well aligned with the uh, mounting holes and then you're ready to install your gears. Now I'm going to take the uh, drive gear which is the one with the lug on the back and I'm going to pre-lube that lug with some white lithium grease and again you can use whatever your favorite uh, engine assembly lube is. I'm also going to pre-lube the gear itself very liberally with some white lithium grease to make sure that we have some sealer on those gears so that they'll make good uh, good suction when the pump just starts to function before it gets oil in it. 
Get those all greased up very nicely. All right, now we're going to install our gear in the upper portion of the pump housing. Just slide it in. You may have to turn it a little bit. You may have to turn the pump body a little bit to get everything to line up. And the gear will drop right in. Once it's in, you can give it a little twist to make sure that you can feel that that tab is interfaced with the cam properly. Once you get that gear installed, we'll pre-lubricate our driven gear our secondary gear in our pump. And again, this will help to uh, get the pump primed up with oil when you first uh, do your initial startup of your engine. Now on these gears, uh, there may or may not be markings on the end of the teeth. Sometimes you'll see a diamond, sometimes you'll see a star, uh, various different markings. Those markings are of no consequence. There's no such thing as timing the oil pump. You don't have to line the marks up. You just simply go ahead and slide the gear in there and uh, you're all set to go. So that gear is slid in. We're all good to go there. Now we're ready to put our cover on. Now if you're doing the turbo oil pump, there would actually be a secondary pump that would stack on top of this. Uh, so it, it would uh, protrude from the engine a little bit uh, with a second set of gears on there. Uh, but the cover will go on in the same fashion in any case. And again, I've pre-lubed this gasket as well. Now on this particular pump, you can see on the back here, there's a couple of oil ports that uh, allow the oil to go to and from the oil cooler. So we're going to want to put our gasket on so that uh, those, the ports are lined up with our gasket openings. So I'm just going to preset that on there. I'm going to put my mounting bolts through, a couple of them at least, to get us our alignment started for us. And then we want to make sure that we uh, line these ports up with the appropriate ports on the pump underneath here. Uh, you've got uh, an oil return port there. We want to make sure that those get lined up properly. So we'll slide this in with our ports lined up. Sandwich that gasket in between there. Have to play with it a little bit to get the bolts lined up. And once we get our bolts uh, snugged up by hand, we're going to torque these uh, to 14 pound-feet. So you use your pound-foot torque wrench set to 14 pound-feet. And we'll go ahead and torque them. There is no specific uh, pattern to torquing these. Uh, but I typically like to just do the cross pattern. So you go diagonally across uh, and draw everything up nice and evenly. So I'll draw them up snug. And once we get them all nice and snug, we can, there's our wrench click, gives us 14 pound feet. And once your four bolts are torqued to 14 pound feet, your oil pump is, uh, installation is complete.